Professor Dave and Chegg here. We now know what these curved arrows mean in the context of organic reaction mechanisms. But since it is so important to be able to draw these correctly, let's go over some more rules and examples showing how they are used so that things will be less confusing when we learn specific mechanisms later. The first thing we want to make abundantly clear is that arrows always go from electron-rich to electron-poor. They start at some region of excess electron density and point toward the region of electron deficiency that those electrons are attacking. This is absolutely without exception. You will never see an electron-pushing arrow starting at a cation or partially positive atom. Other words we can use to describe this are nucleophile and electrophile. Nucleophiles are electron-rich, and they do the attacking. Electrophiles are electron-deficient, and they get attacked. So arrows go from nucleophile to electrophile. This means arrows can start either from a lone pair, a negative charge, or the center of a covalent bond, and they always end at some atom, which often has a partial positive charge or a formal positive charge. Next, to become more familiar with nucleophiles and electrophiles, let's understand that nucleophiles are always either negatively charged or of neutral charge. If the atom that is attacking has a negative charge, once coordinated to the electrophile, it will be neutral, and if it started out neutral, it will end up with a positive charge. Conversely, the electrophile can either have a positive charge or be of neutral charge. If it was positive, it will end up neutralized. If neutral, it will end up with a negative charge. When we put these two facts together, we will see that charge is conserved in a chemical reaction. Plus and minus charges are either generated or neutralized in such a way as to conserve the overall charge of all the species involved. Finally, we want to understand that the octet rule will guide many reactions. The most important aspect of this is that elements in the N equals 2 shell can't exceed their octet. Carbon can only make four bonds, so if it is to accept a bond from an incoming nucleophile, it must also lose a bond. This way, it can maintain its octet. Also, when charges are generated or neutralized, this also follows the octet rule. If a base picks up a proton from hydronium, the electrons in the oxygen-hydrogen bond stay with oxygen and neutralize it. Oxygen had an octet before and after, either three bonds and a lone pair, or two bonds and two lone pairs, so the neutralization did not change this. We are going to get plenty of practice writing out mechanisms for a variety of organic reactions. For now, let's simply be aware of what nucleophiles and electrophiles are and how to represent their interactions using electron-pushing arrows. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.